Hello, my name is Martin Chuck, and today I'm going to talk to you about a couple of things I think are really important. I'm going to talk to you about the number 45 and how 45 is going to help you shoot 35 the next time you play golf. You see, there's some key angles in golf that are very, very important. 45 degrees is just a rough estimate, but something I want you to be aware of when you go out and play your next round of golf. Let's talk about where these 45s occur when you play and how it's going to help you the next time you practice. The first 45s are really in the hands. In a good address position, what you're going to see is that the back of the left wrist is bent back and the right wrist is generally flat. Well, there's a 45 degree angle, give or take, in that left wrist. Now, that left wrist is in a vertical condition, but it's bent back upon itself. See, these are called address hands, address hand location. This address hand location with the shaft vertical, and now sure, we can all play the shaft to some degree, a little bit left or right, but there's a little angle in this left wrist. Is it 45 degrees? Who really cares? But just the purpose of showing you this is that to understand your angles. So here's a bent left wrist condition, here's a flat right wrist condition. Now what happens in the golf swing, as you start to take your club back, somewhere on the way back, this right wrist bends back upon itself and the left wrist flattens. Sure, you could look at a Dustin Johnson who really has a bowed left wrist, but he still has a bent right wrist. And I'm going to say that that angle, give or take, 45 degrees. Just an angle you need to be very aware of. See, a lot of golfers, especially you slicers out there, what you do is you take this right wrist and you really don't bend it back upon itself. You keep it pretty flat and you over-rotate this club face wide open. And as a result of that, typically you have a steep, over-the-top path back to the golf ball. So understanding this first 45 is very important. How the hands go from an address condition, bent left wrist, flat right wrist, to the opposite, flat left and bent right. There's your first 45. So here's a great drill to understand that 45. Just with a golf ball, you're going to hit some right arm only shots, and you're going to feel this right wrist bend back upon itself. When it bends back upon itself, I'm going to introduce to you the next 45. How the hips go from square to open. They start to open. They're what's powering this action. We're allowing this right wrist to bend back upon itself, and then we're powering this action with our hips, which is really our pivot, our pivot thrust. So you can see this dowel that I have on the ground. This represents where from my visual perspective, I can see my hips going. My hips are pretty much matching up with this dowel that I've laid on the ground roughly on a 45 degree angle. So we've got our hands. We're going to bend our right wrist back. We're going to let our pivot deliver this bent right wrist to impact. Now I'm not trying to flip this ball in the air or hit it with my hands at all. I'm letting my pivot do the work. I'm letting my hips turn. They are transporting this arm. So here's how it looks. There's a crisp little shot delivered with pivot. Now at impact, what you're going to see is something that's going to be our third 45. Again, very, very important. When I get to impact from my address hand location to my impact hand location, when I look down from my visual perspective, I can see this shaft is almost matching that 45 on the ground. Is it exact? No. But it's just a reference that's going to help you understand some small angles 45 degrees, give or take, how to play better golf. Again, how these 45s are going to help you shoot 35. So understanding how this right wrist bends back upon itself is vital. Now, sure, we make bigger golf swings when we're playing golf. We hit longer shots. But when we do so, our pivot takes this small little motion, and we turn this pivot. I oftentimes see golfer is trying to have an overextended long backswing and they really overdo it. We don't hit it far by having ginormous backswings, we hit it far by having organized impact alignments that are delivered with our pivot. So let's go over these again and let's, let's enhance a little bit of this. So our right wrist pivot, how are we going to feel this? Are we going to throw the club hitter with our hands? No. We're going to do something I call capturing gravity. This is how this works. When we make a backswing, let our right wrist bend back upon itself, you're going to see, if you do this right, these grooves are going to match our spine angle. So I'm tipped over a little bit. These grooves are matching that spine angle. They're not, they're not at 12 o'clock at this point. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to let this club drop. 
And you can clearly see Newton does it as a favor. It, it speeds this club up and it lands on the ground. Well, we'll do it again. Let that club drop. Okay. Now, this time, let's not let it drop. Let's have the sensation of the drop and then let our pivot get to our next 45. And again, our third 45 is this idea of the shaft leaning forward. And again, from my visual perspective, I can see this shaft on a 45 matching up with that dowel on the ground. Okay, there's one final 45 I want to talk about. And that's the general shape of our golf swing. So here's a down the line perspective. I've got a target line and I have a dowel coming out of the ground at 45 degrees, give or take. When I hit a golf shot, I'm not trying to keep this club traveling down my target line because if I do that, it's going to pull me off of balance. The golf swing is, in essence, a circle that goes around our body in a 45 degree angle. It's like if we took a hula hoop and we set it down here and we tipped it on a 45, that's basically the shape that our golf swing has to take in order to hit successful golf shots. A driver is pretty much on a 45 degree angle, at least the best players in the world are, and our irons are incrementally a little bit steeper, but 45 degrees is a good, a good frame of reference. So if we hit a full shot and we're paying attention to our 45s, again, our right wrist bending up, back upon itself, those grooves are matching my spine angle. How do I get that 45 to, to impact? Well, I do it with my hips. My hips are now at 45. And again, this shaft, for just argument's sake, is basically at a 45 degree angle. Again, from my visual perspective, when I look down, it matches that shaft or that dowel that's on the ground. So let's hit a shot. Here's the shape of my golf swing. Okay, there's a crisp little nine iron, and that shape is a 45 degree angle, give or take. So I really want you to pay attention to your 45s. Really important. The right wrist bends back upon itself. Of course, you had a, you started off with a bent left wrist. That bent left wrist went flat. The right wrist bends. Our body loads this whole motion. Don't overdo this, people. Don't bend your arms too much. Let your arms feel as though they get about as high as your right ear. Your pivot will let them go a little bit higher, but you don't want to place them there. Let your pivot do the work, and then we're going to let our hips deliver those arms. We're going to transport those arms down to the golf ball to our another 45 right here. We're going to deliver those angles, that downward strike, that forward-leaning shaft. And again, from our visual perspective, this forward-leaning shaft looks as though it's on a 45 to this dowel on the ground. And then from there, hopefully, your momentum takes you up to a fantastic finish. So I hope these tips, understanding your 45s, really make a difference in your game and help you shoot 35 the next time you play nine holes. Have a great day. Hi there, I'm gonna give you a little tip that I think is gonna really help your golf game. If you were like me, you were taught to play golf by keeping your head down. Let me tell you a little secret. That's not the secret to great golf. Keeping your head down just restricts your pivot. Looks a little something like this. So I'm gonna keep my head down, and guess what? Boy, oh boy, did I top that golf ball. But how did I top it if I didn't raise up? Well, other things can clearly go wrong in a golf swing. But let's not take away from the natural motion of a golf swing by keeping your head down. Sure, you always see the photos in the magazines of the great tour players in their impact alignment with their head down. But the next frame is simply the fact that their head releases with their pivot. They let their energy go around their bodies to get in balance on their left foot. So please don't keep your head down. If you're missing the golf ball, it's not because you're lifting your head, people. There's other things going on. Let your body naturally rotate. Have some energy. Hit the ball a long way. Have a great day.